Hello viewers, welcome to Coding Interviews channel. Hope you are doing great. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please go ahead and subscribe. I have created a bunch of playlists to cover various categories of problems such as stacks, queues, linked lists, graphs, trees, DFS, BFS, dynamic programming and so on. Please check them out. I have uploaded the code for this problem to GitHub repository. You can get the link from description below this video. Let's jump into today's problem. Longest sub array of ones after deleting one element. So given a binary array nums, you should delete one element from it. Return the size of the longest non-empty sub array containing only ones in the resulting array. Return zero if there is no such sub array. So basically we are given with a binary array. It will have only zeros and ones, right? So we are allowed to delete one element. So basically it's not we are allowed, but we should delete one element. After deleting that one element, we need to find out what is the longest sub array that is possible, right? So once we have delete that one, one element, right? We are going to look at only the ones, not zeros, right? Only ones. So our sub array should have all ones, no zeros, right? That's the thing. So if there is no sub array like that, right? Then we have to return zero. So when, when is the possibility of not having that case, right? So when we have to return a zero, right? So that means, that means if there is at least one single one in the binary array, we don't have to fall to this case, right? So when do we return a zero, right? If all the elements in the array are zeros, right? So if all the elements are zero, then we simply return zero, right? Because we won't be able to get a single one by deleting one, one zero from that, right? Since all the elements are zero, then you just return zero. That's it. We don't have to do anything, right? So that is the this case, return zero. But, but what if the array has only one element, right? What if the array has only one element? So this is what it is, right? So you should delete the one and after deleting one, there are only zero elements. So in that case also you should return zero, right? Because we have to delete one element irrespective of that, right? You should delete one element. So even if this, this one, you return zero. So there are two possible cases, right? When you have to return zero, one is all of them are zero when there is single element and that element is one, right? In that particular case, you are going to return zero. So there is one more case. What if array has all ones, right? So let's say this is what it is, right? What if array has all ones? In this particular case, all the full array, one, two, three, four, and seven. So seven, right? So sub array, longest sub array, we'll say, longest sub array. We could say is equal to seven, right? But that is not the correct answer, right? So this is incorrect. Why? Because you should delete one element from it, right? You should delete one element from it. So we will say the correct answer is six for this particular example because we have to delete one of them right that's why we will say correct answer is six so it is not a seven right this is if the array has all ones right so but if the array has several ones and several zeros that is the i mean general case right so these whatever we have seen till now they are those are extreme cases right so if it has only single one or if it has all ones, if it has all zeros, these are like extreme cases. But majority of them will have or the arrays will have several zeros and several ones. We don't know their positions, right? So in that particular case, we have to delete one element from that, right? And we need to find the longest sub array, right? So we are not looking for longest full array whether by deleting the single element whether we can get a full length or not, right? 
but we are looking for a sub array that means whatever the element that we want to delete if it if the deletion becomes a zero right that will be the best case right so let's let's go look at this kind of example right right so this one so this has seven element right this has seven elements but if you remove zero right if you remove zero that becomes consecutive six ones right so that is the longest sub array after deleting one element so for this particular case answer will be six because we are deleting this zero okay whatever zero is available if you delete zero these two will be together with this four ones these two 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 ones will be together with these four ones right that is how we will get the answer as six so the best case is to delete the zero which is surrounded by ones that is the that is the kind of window we need to look for right that is the kind of sliding window we need to look for so the problem that we are going to solve is the approach that we are going to solve is with the sliding window approach so we will make sure our sliding window will have at most one zero so that we will knock that one zero off and the rest of them will be ones which is actually the longest sub array it it may be it not necessarily the array will have single sub array but it can be more sub array as possible right so for example uh, if i say right in this particular case right if i remove this zero so these will become six ones but if i this remove this zero they will be i will have those many ones it's nine ones right so seven here two here so nine the answer will be nine in that particular case right so what we are essentially looking for is we will maintain a sliding window where that sliding window will have at most one zero right so whenever we see a next zero we will discard all the elements that occurred before that zero so while we go through this right so this will be one sliding window for us right that sliding window's length is six but as soon as we see zero right we will discard all this and our sliding window will become this right so that's the logic that we are going to see so as and when we see a second zero right until we see first zero we are fine right so when we start processing the numbers from here right we saw first zero we are still fine go on go on go on we saw second zero right that is when we stop and say okay i'm done let me calculate the sub array length so far right and my sliding window will become from here go on go on go on go on go on like this that will become my sliding window right so this is essentially and not, not a constant sliding window but this is an increasing sliding window i would say so normally a sliding window will be like a constant sliding window but in here the sliding window itself is a increasing sliding window okay so that's the distinction here so basically we are looking for for a sliding window which has single zero so that we will knock that zero off and get the longest sub array right so for this purpose what we are going to use is we will declare several variables to keep track of the stuff right so let's jump into the code and see how we are going to solve this problem right so i have calculated the length which is len and i have declared a variable count of zeros so far basically right initialized to zero and i am keeping track of the position where the previous zero appeared right all we care about the last zero where we saw right so when we process from left to right till here we are fine we want to keep track of this zero so that from then on the new sliding window starts right so we don't start sliding window from here but we start from after that zero appeared right so that's the reason why i am keeping track of the previous zeros index obviously the start and end pointers for a given sliding window 
and then max is the length of the longest subarray after deleting one element right so now we will go through the elements in the binary array so as and when we see a zero right we will make sure the count of zeros is less than one or not right what we said is in our sliding window we will keep at most one zero right that's why we are making sure the number of zeros is less than one if it is less than one then only we will enter here we will make the previous zeros index as i and count of zero we will increment and end is also getting implemented but if the count of zeros is already one right then what we are saying is okay the previous sliding window is over we are going to start a new sliding window so where we are going to start the new sliding window after the previous zero right after the previous zero index so that's what we are doing here so our new sliding window is starting from previous zero plus one right so we will come back to this condition in little bit later right so end we are putting the end pointer to the current i and previous zero now we are initializing to the whatever the zero that we are seeing right now right good and then count of zeros again will be one right so we do all this and if at all that means if at all we saw this case right the second zero that means we need to calculate the so far longest subarray so that's what we are doing here right so far the longest subarray so we will come to this statement once we go through the code again so this is all about if the number is zero but what if the number is one right we are making sure if the start pointer is already initialized if the start is not initialized that means we have not seen a one till now right so start is initialized to still negative one right start is negative one end is also negative one so if start is negative one that means we haven't seen a one till now in that particular case what we should do we need to initialize the start and end with that i whatever the ith location right good and if we have already seen an one then all we need to do is increment end pointer right that's it we keep on incrementing the end pointer so now coming back to this statement right these two statements so if the start is initialized then only we calculate the maximum if the start is initialized then only we will restart the sliding window if start is not even initialized right there is no point in initializing the sliding window right we need a starting one right so what if the array has all zeros we never enter this thing right we never enter this thing the start is never initialized start will be initialized only in case of you see a one right only when you see in case of one right so if num is equal to zero we go into this if loop else means it is only one right because the array is binary array right good now going further right after going through entire array right what if what if you have uncalculated max right for that purpose we need to see we need to use the same formula again to calculate the max right so but before that we need to see if previous zero is initialized or not right that means all of the elements in the given array are ones right what if that case if that is the case means that means here let me write it down so no zeros in the array right that's what it is if there are no zeros in the array what we said for an example right here there are no zeros in the array longest subarray is seven but th that's what we said incorrect right since we need to delete one element we said it is six right that's the reason why we will say okay end minus start is the answer the maximum value right 
of course we will check with the existing max also and then override the max but what if start pointer is not initialized that means no ones in the array right start pointer is not at all initialized means no ones in the array that means all of the elements are zero in that case what we should do just assign the max to zero that's what we said right if all are zeros just return zero so we are saying max will be initialized to zero so these are the two cases that we were talking initially when we start but otherwise we need to do the same calculation as this right that means we have start pointer initialized and we have previous zero pointer initialized that means we have some sub array where we could get if zeros and ones are present right that is again this form so at the end we are going to return the maximum value right so now let's go ahead and look at the time and space complexity right so we are saying n is the number of elements n is number of elements in nums the array basically right so in that particular case what will be the time complexity we are going through the entire array just once if you see this is for loop we are going through the entire array just once so that means the time complexity will be order of n right and space complexity there are bunch of variables that we are using here uh, length count of zeros previous zero start and max right apart from those variables we are not using any extra space so that means if the nums the array length is a million let's say we still use only these six variables right we still use only these six variables that means we can say the space complexity is a constant space right so what i want to say is this algorithm is a order of n times complexity and order of one space complexity right so if you have any further questions for this please post them in the comment section below this video i'll get back to you as soon as i can i have posted this code to the github repository you can find the link for the repository in the description below this video if you haven't subscribed to the channel please go ahead and subscribe and share among your friends please click on the bell icon so that you will be notified about all my future videos thank you for watching i will be back with another problem very soon till then stay safe and goodbye